Hey homies, we're back to a new series of an analog horror. Uh, today we're looking into the children under the house. Uh, this has been made by Vintage8. Check out the description for a link to his YouTube and go and support him. And uh, we're going to get straight in. Okay, so last week I purchased a repossessed storage locker. Inside was an old desk, an old day computer and a filing cabinet. The letterhead of the few loose documents read the office of Julia Liu. From what I could find, she was a successful child therapist in Kate's Crossing from the late 70s to the early 90s. Her obituary stated she died on December 18th, 2015. Now, from what I have heard uh, in relation to the Tanji virus, I think the Kate's Crossing might potentially fill into this. So I'm kind of hoping it doesn't ruin it, but I guess we'll see. At a glance, this seemed like a typical haul. Typical, if not for the collection of VHS tips hidden in the false bottom of the desk drawer. VHS, here we go. Analog horror at its best. And uh, if you haven't watched, there is a video that i done. It was the last analog horror video that i done, which was kind of a parody of analog horrors. And I did make a comment uh in relation to that like every analog horror has this screen here and we're back at it again well hey <clears throat> wow <clears throat> that's the true power of it there right hey john million dollar idea a way to share a video without waiting on the mail what do you think anyway as i said on the phone i think this may be the easiest way to get you up to speed on what i'm dealing with here Right. Before you ask, no, we don't have releases for the family. They refuse to have their likeness involved in any way. However, they did allow me the use of Jessica's drawings. We will mm. use their names when we get to the writing stage. Regardless, I think you'll be able to see why I think this will make one hell of a book. So it seems like there's going to be some book written then based on some of these pictures from someone called Jessica. Mm. Okay. Questionnaire. After our first session, each member of the family was given the standard questionnaire. The results are as followed. The patient's name is Jessica Daniels. Jessica, or Jess, as she prefers to be called, is seven years old. Seven. No birth, no complications, no no medical issues. She's intelligent, sweet, friendly, and highly empathetic. I mean, the pictures... Born in Houston, Texas. I was just going to say, the, for, for a seven-year-old, those pictures aren't actually that bad. I can draw to save my life at seven, so I'm gonna uh, up this uh, Jessica girl for that. Well done. <laughs> Where she never had issues in school or socializing with peers or adults. It seems like this Jessica girl the Clark's house. seems to be pretty okay. I love how it's built up on columns, and I'm sure you remember the Clarks from your time here. Sweet old couple. They opened mm. the dive used to drag me to for lunch. What was it? Oh yeah, the Burger Shack. <clears throat> but anyway, <clears throat> according to her mother, Carol, Jess had a particularly tough time adjusting. She didn't notice anything out of the ordinary until the second week, Wednesday night to be exact. Hi. I think it was after midnight when Jess ran into her mother's room screaming. She claimed there were people living under the house. What? Carol dismissed this oh God. As a nightmare, but it started happening night after night until Jess finally refused to sleep in her room. So I'm going to assume, just on the basis of this then, that these pictures are going to be of the children, or the people, or the whoever entities maybe, that are under the house then. Okay. I think that's kind of what we're getting at, right? Moved the child's bed to her room, but Jess continued to wake up saying the same thing. She could hear people talking under the floor. Wow. Carol made sure to note that Jess never had problems sleeping in Houston. Adam, the child's father, fed up with having the child sleeping in the room devised mm. a simple solution. He brought her under the house, tried to show her that there wasn't anything there. I'm not being funny, right? But if your child is going through this at the age they are, right? It doesn't matter if they're seven or if they were like 10, like, or even 13, 14. Like, I mean, I, I, I do kind of understand where the dad's getting at. But then I think for me, you know, he's getting annoyed, of it, uh, annoyed at it and it's not... I. I, we don't know how long that's how long she's been in or she's sleeping in their parents' room for, but at the, you know at the same time, I mean, if it was me as a father, you know, I would have probably taken my child down there straight away without having all this long, long shit. 
you know? Like, it just seems very long, in my opinion, that he's taken her down there to show her. I would have shown him straight away. Depending on it. Yeah. But then I can kind of relate into the voices, because I get voices of demons myself, so I can kind of understand where it's coming from. But as a child, it must be very scary. Oh. And according to Adam, there wasn't. But Jess was convinced she saw something. The girl got into a ball and screamed until her voice gave out. She's been meek since that day. Jeb. After a series of tests and multiple second opinions, no physician could find anything wrong. There's nothing hindering the girl from speaking. Therefore, the conclusion is that her condition is mental in nature. The drawings you are seeing are currently her only form of communication. So she won't speak. So it seems like she won't speak then, and all she will do is draw to kind of advise of what she's seen or heard or whatever. Shit, man. That's, that's some psychotic shit right there. You can't turn around to me and say that a doctor hasn't um, you know, found that or figured something out of that. I mean, I I am going through this kind of shit and, you know, I've been, you know, diagnosed with emotional trauma and PTSD. So I don't, I know it's a little, probably a little bit different, but still, it kind of fits under it, right? The questionnaire, I have a few thoughts on the other family members. Carol Daniels, she's the children's primary caregiver. From what I can observe, she's a caring mother. However, she is deeply resentful of her husband, Adam, for forcing them to move from Houston to Kate's Crossing. Right. Daniels is an obvious workaholic. He spends the majority of his time at work. Dean, her brother, typical early teen. He wasn't happy about the move, but seems to be adjusting adequately. Well, at least one of them's working out what is okay with it, right? Digest this material. Love to talk strategy. The end of the questionnaire. Oh, shit. Okay. Wow. Very nice. Okay, so that was part one. We have got another two parts to watch. So I will catch you on the second part in just a second, guys. Keep it locked in, yeah? So I'm very interested in this story so far. It does seem very good. I like how what Vintage 8 has done with this so far. So let's go into part two and let's find out what the next part of this is. It's about three minutes long. I say, like, okay, so good news. Mrs. Daniels will allow me to tape record my voice during the sessions. I will splice in Jessica's pictures and give general descriptions and notes when appropriate. Okay, so it looks like they're going to have a, a personal chat with this uh, Jessica then. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. At least they're getting something sorted, right? I guess. Or is it all a hoax? Session one. Okay, so there must be multiple sessions then, right? How many there might there might there be though? Hi Jess. My name is Miss Julia. How are you today? Well, at least she's okay today. Mom or dad told you why you're here? So how about we get to know each other? Would you like that? Can you imagine being a child though in this position and you know you've had you, you're not able to speak because of these um these things that you've been seeing, right? And then uh then you end up um only being able to talk via sort of drawings and that. I would find that so creepy. Especially at seven years old. I think I think I'd literally be very low. So when she says she's okay, I, I don't think she is. That's just what she's doing to Maybe look good. I, I not look good, but you know, I don't think she is. Is that okay? What's your favorite food? Mine's spaghetti. Mine's pizza, but yeah. She likes French fries then chips. That's cool. What's your favorite color? Mine's blue. Oh my god, so it's hers. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's go. About your family. I'm not answering that. Okay, it looks like mum's cooking. Dad's on the computer, so working, workaholic, as they said, as you said in number one. That might be her brother, blah, 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 telephone. Look, you, I mean, you can see Jess in that respect there. I mean, look at her there. Like, you can see, like, the teddy that I've, I've kind of... Well, I've paused, it's kind of took it off a little bit, but... Um, you know, you can see that, you know, she's very sad. She's got the teddy with, like, the one of the eyes off. It, it just shows very 
low depression, in my opinion, for this child. And I'm not medically trained, by the way. But I'm just saying, it just looks like it. And you guys will probably agree. Why are you frowning? See what she says. No reply. So she won't say. Okay. Or draw. So how about you tell me who that is? Hmm. Wow. Did your mom or your dad get him for you? No. I have a feeling I know what that, what's going to happen now, but I don't want to give it away. Friend. Okay, so is this the friend or... That's very sweet. Tell me more about your friend. The one that lives under the house? I want to make a note here. She stared in the corner of the room as if she was waiting for permission. She then shook her head in the negative. So I've got a feeling this children under the house or whatever is under the house or maybe out might be up. That's come out of the basement, potentially then. Um, is something entity worth then? It, it's got to be. If that if this is what, you know, she's gone to the corner of uh, the room. Um, yeah. I wonder what this entity is then. Let's uh, see if we find out. Is someone here, Jess? Is that your friend in the corner? Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. It's definitely something... Another Psychological. That clearly looks like a face. It appears that she has an imaginary friend. Yeah. I knew it. What's their name? Maybe we could all play together. Oh, imagine. No. She would no longer participate in my questions at this point. Regardless, I thought this was a decent first session. I'll be fair with you. I think it was pretty good. I mean, at least that she's kind of opened up about a few things. I mean, she that Jessica could have easily turned around and gone, I don't want to say anything at all. Um, or at least draw about it, you know, like, you know, at least make some sort of like reply. Uh, but at least she has done that. So that's good. Um, I'd say it's a decent first session. What do you guys think about it? Leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let's try to talk by the end of next week. And I'm glad they're getting it done like every week as well. It's not like a monthly thing stuff like that so that's pretty good all right all right guys so that's the past part two of children under the house by vintage eight make sure like i said again to check in the description for their link if you want to go and subscribe to their channel i would recommend it because this is very good so far we're going to move on to part three in just a minute We've watched the children under the house one and two we're now moving on to number three i'm really looking forward to this i'm actually really liking this analog horror so far i really do think that this is this story it's, it's some they're actually telling a story now i know a lot of analog horrors that we see they do do that but this is quite an in-depth story and i like it it's probably one of the best that i've uh watched in a while um so yeah let's uh let's see what happens now maybe it's a number se a session two or maybe we'll find out more about the entity. Uh, let's see. It is session two. Okay, nice. It's cool. We'll just say more this time. So how are you doing today? Here we go. Fine. Okay, so just on the background of that. So this is just from experience myself. When people normally say like, how are you doing? Are you okay? If people say fine, most of the time, I would say 80% of that means they're not. So there's definitely, I think there might be something going on here. Find out. And what did you do last night? Okay, it looks like she's watching TV, but there's like a red screen. Is that something sort of evil? Game. If a genie came out of a bottle and granted you three wishes, what would those be? It's a good game to play to kind of get it out the child, right? No reply. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> How about wow. go first then? Hmm. Okay, loves the beach. To eat what I want and not gain a pound. Okay. I'm hoping the last. A happy Jess. Okay. Wow. Okay. Right. Okay, so it seems like Jess wants a happy family. Uh, she wants to go back to Houston, obviously where they moved from. And the entities under the house. I'm assuming she wants gone, or she wants. Angels? 
Is this who you think lives under your house? It's not, is this who you think lives under the house? I think it is, this is what, or they, or them. That's what's under the house, mate. Kinda, okay. So you wish they'd leave? Okay, so Jess actually wants to get rid of the entities, okay. Okay. Let's talk about your friend, okay? Okay, John. Again, the girl stared into the corner of the room, almost like she was waiting for permission. See, this is the problem. Like, I, there was a series that I watched not too long ago, actually, that was in this aspect, where um, there was a young girl. She was actually 14. It was on Netflix, this series, actually. I'm not going to say what it is, but um, anyway. But uh, she was 14, and she had, there was an entity that she had in this kind of aspect, which wasn't under the basement, but it was just there. And uh, every time that someone asked her the same question, whether they would be happy for they would be happy for them to talk about it, she would have to she would look away, and then it would be like a like a face of some sort that she would see, I guess. Um, and there was one time where she did speak about it, and this entity went crazy and basically made her pass out. So I wonder why this is why Jess isn't saying anything. If this is the case going forward from now. Because the entities may well turn on her. So maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but see. Is that your friend? What's their name? Yeah, see, there we go. I think that might be partly to why. Would you tell me their name if I gave you a sucker? How about two? One for you and one for them. Once again, the girl looked into the corner of the room, then shook her head yes. Mm, okay. This must be who the entity, then at least one of them. Okay. Hmm. Mia. Note, I have to admit, I found that image quite disturbing. How yeah, that image is very disturbing, especially if a child is seeing that at seven years old. That's some fucked up shit, bro. Mia or Maya, you call them either way. Okay, at least we're, we're getting some background of them. Okay. Okay. It isn't the creepiest imaginary friend that I've had drawn for me. Does your friend live under the house? Yeah. Here we go. How many friends live under the house? Is it a whole family, maybe? Ten, maybe more. Why do you think they're there? Could they maybe there? They could be like past families that like past children or families, depending on what you look at it, um, that have lived in that property previously. Maybe. Are you still scared of them? Go and answer it. Okay. Would you like them to go away? Whoa! Oh my God, man! Picture frame fell off the wall. It Made me jump then, shit, bro. Room, she claimed her friend was standing. Needless to say, it gave us both a good jump. Ha ha. Oh my god, my I'm literally freezing cold now. That was so out of nowhere. Fuck. Ooh. So, ten imaginary friends. That child has a lot to say, but she's having trouble finding someone to say it to. Most likely the father. For homework, I'm going to try and have dad ask questions. Mirror what we're doing at home. Mm. All right, John. I look forward to our chat Sunday. Bye. Okay, so that's session two. That's the end of that. Okay. And sorry this tape is a little late, but I think I have rats. Something has snuck into my office and eaten all the candy. What the fuck? That little bit at the end there was a little bit sus. So if you heard the bit where she says, okay, so... The, uh, all the candy's gone. Now, children like candy, right? That, are you trying, are we trying to say that the entities or whatever is under their house has now moved over to this place as well? I mean, they might have been in the room at the time, so maybe that entities nicked that, took the sweets? Um, or has the big group of them gone there? I guess we'll find out in number four, because this is going to be carried on. So thank you for watching, guys. Appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out, y'all.